has exalted him. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. We come against every spirit this morning, not like Jesus. We thank you for deliverance taking place in this place. We thank you for salvation in this place, God. We thank you for healing in this place, God. We thank you that you're going to lift up a bow down head, God. I thank you now for in the presence, huh? Of the Lord, there is strength. In the presence of the Lord, there is joy. In the presence of the Lord, there is love. God, we thank you for every person on every row. God, I thank you for the online audience. God, I thank you for saving now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for these Levites and minstrels. Cover us under your blood, God. When you see us, Lord, hallelujah, you don't see us in our sinfulness. So we ask you to create in us this morning a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit. Father, we thank you for the privilege to pray. God, we thank you for the honor to come in before your presence, hallelujah. We don't take you for granted, God. We don't take your spirit for granted, God. We thank you, we need you. As the deer penneth after the water, Lord, our soul longs for you. God, we didn't deserve another chance, but you gave us one more chance. And for that, God, we don't wait for anybody to tell us to give you glory. But we open our mouths. We command our minds. We command our hands. We command our feet to give you glory. But there is none like you in all the earth. You are great, hallelujah. You're sovereign in all your ways. Thank you for being a sovereign God. Thank you for being a sovereign king. There's no God like our God. We thank you, God. We thank you now, hallelujah, for drawing us closer to you. We thank you for wooing us by your spirit. Even on the parking lot, we thank you now for the anointing of God. The anointing that destroys every yoke today. I ask you, God, in the name of Jesus, to look on Lady Rosen, God. And as we lift our first family up, God, I thank you that you're touching every family represented here and online. God, if you do these things for us, we'll continue to give you glory. We'll continue to give you praise, not for what you've done, but for who you are. If you know he's a savior, if you know he's a Lord, I dare you to give him a praise like you've never done before. God, we open our mouths as a corporate body, and we get a word of God, hallelujah. We praise you, oh God. It's in the strong, powerful name of Jesus. We ask all these prayers in your name. Come on, if you believe he's hearing and he's answering now. I insist an unusual anointing. I command every imp, hallelujah. Every demon has to flee now in the name of Jesus. I command everyone to flee now. You have no authority in this place. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We thank you tonight. We thank you today, God. We thank you, God. We thank you. Come on. Come on. Come on and give him glory. We want a glory that the minister can't even minister. Come on and receive our praise, oh God. In your name we pray. In the name we ask it all. Come on and take the mic because I'll pray. I'll pray, hallelujah. I'll pray, hallelujah. For prayer changes things. Come on, come on, don't get tired. Just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. We thank you today. We thank you, hallelujah. We don't wait for anybody. The rocks don't know like I know. But I'll praise him because he's good. I'll praise him because he kept my mind. He kept my mind. When my mind went on him, he kept my mind. I thank him for a right mind. Let this mind that's in Christ Jesus be also in me.
Oh, uh, come on. I said if you believe that, somebody give them a praise in the house. Hallelujah. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. I said praise him. How many of y'all know that we serve a big God? He's amazing. He's awesome. And he's mighty. Come on, let's do it. Oh, yeah, put your hands on it right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, put your hands together right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, everybody, your hands on it. Heaven. See, my God is big. So strong and mighty, his plans for me is victory. Come on, everybody help me say, my God, my God is big, is big, so strong, so strong and mighty. Come on, his plans. For me, for me, say is victory. Is victory, victory, victory. Come on, you got it. Everybody say, my my God is big, so strong, so strong. Yes, His plan, for me, for me, is victory. Come on, everybody. Sunday morning, let's praise him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, let's say it again right here. Hey, say, say, my God, everybody, come on. So strong, so strong. Come on and clap your hands if you believe it. Come on, let's declare it right here. Hey, say there's nothing, there's nothing.
of all the praise. Come on, keep clapping and blessing his name. Come on, clap him. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. Come on, keep clapping him. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. I serve a big God. He, he's a big God. He's a great big God. He's a big old God. Come on, I'll shout. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. Let me see the hands of those that came with a great expectation today. Now, God, I need something. Come on, I got something seven days ago, but I need something else to take me to never seven days. Come on. Come on, just shout, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Come on, shout, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, shout, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. God, we love you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Lifted up and my mouth filled with praise. Thank you, God. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless you, O oh Lord. Come on, help us celebrate. I will bless, I will bless you, O oh Lord. I will praise you, 
God. Come on, everybody, lift your voice. I will bless the O Lord. I will bless the O Lord. Yes, God. With the heart of thanksgiving. Your voices all over the sanctuary. Yes. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless you, Lord. Sound good. Come on, one more time, everybody. I will bless you, Lord. a sound in this place. Come on, you make a sound in this place. Open your mouth. Come on, I can't hear you. Make a sound in this place. Come on, come on, open your mouth. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, open your mouth. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem, for a day in thy court is better than a thousand. Come on, open your mouth, all you people. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. I will bless the Lord. Come on, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the O Lord. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Come on, shout, thank you, Jesus. I dare you just open your mouth and look towards heaven and say, good morning, Jesus. Come on, good morning, Jesus. This is all I have is my worship. Come on, this is all I have. This is all I have to offer up to you. I will bless thee, O Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, kingdom life. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless his name. Well, great morning, kingdom life. Great morning. It's so good to see y'all. We're so happy that you joined us this morning to worship with us. Kingdom life is a place where strangers need not feel strange, where everybody is somebody and there's a place for you in the kingdom. We welcome you to worship with us in any and all of our services. And we are just so happy to see you. So if you would look at your neighbor, look at somebody you didn't come with and say good morning, speak to them, greet them, show them the love of God. The only reason why we're here is because of Jesus. Every day, brand new mercies. And everything we need, he's provided. It's our song, let's sing it. All because of Jesus. All because of Jesus. All because, All because of Jesus. All because, All because of Jesus. We are here. So organ. Because, because of his blessing. All is 
all because of Jesus. Let's give him praise for allowing us another chance to come in the kingdom and praise his name. Great Sunday morning, Kingdom Life. The Sunday morning announcements are as follows. Today, today at 5 p.m., Bishop will be speaking in Loris, South Carolina. Uh -huh. Hallelujah for Pastor Lavinia DeWitt, DeWitt's 43rd anniversary. It'd be a shame for us all, for him to have to go alone and none of us go. So the bus is going. If you have yet to sign up, please see me so that you can get on the bus, Gus. And don't let our pastor take a walk, our bishop take a walk by himself. Amen? Amen. Amen. And let's go and try to and, and celebrate this great woman of God. Amen. Let's not forget on September 10th, it's college day. Come on and bring all of your friends, all of your um, college friends, invite them out and wear your paraphernalia from whatever school you represent on that Sunday morning. Millionaire mindset. Anybody want to be a millionaire? I'm a millionaire. Well, if you want to become a millionaire, I want you to sign up for Bishop Rosen's class. It's coming up. And Sister Tamika Leary will have that information directly after service. You see her out in the vestibule, and if you want to sign up, sign up. It's going to be a meaningful class. You're going to learn a lot. Amen? Amen for the millionaire mindset. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. That's a command. Praise the Lord, everybody. That's a command. That's not a question. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't have enough of you. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. I guess we're going to praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord! On your way here, you pass by a cemetery. On your way here, you pass by a prison. On your way here, you pass by a hospital. And you were not in none of those three locations. So praise the Lord, everybody! If you don't have a reason, he woke you up this morning. If you need another reason, he woke you up this morning. And if you're not in another reason, he woke you up this morning. Hey, I said he woke you up this morning. Glory to Jesus. You ought to 
look at, you ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I hate to ruin the surprise, but things are going to work out for you. I know it don't look like it right now. I know it don't feel like it right now. I know it may not seem like it's going to work out, but all things work together for the good of it. That love the Lord, that I'm called according to his work. We know this. Hallelujah. I have an assignment. We have an NBO star. We have an I sense an unusual anointing in the sanctuary. I sense that God is going to say something through the man of God today. But we got to make sure the ground is right so we can receive. I sense in the spirit that somebody's heart is going to change. I sense in the spirit that somebody's going to leave here healed. I sense in the spirit of God that somebody gonna leave here transformed. Somebody ought to raise a hand back and say yes. Say yes. Oh, yes. If you can be seated. If you can, I understand. But I came here on one. I bought a dime with me. You know what that means? I'ma praise him at the drop of a dime. Oh. I wish somebody would put your hands together, put your feet on the foot, and let's praise him. on your trail 
the next time it seems like life is getting the best of you, you got to remind yourself it's going to be all right. And the wonderful thing about it is he going to make it all right. You have no need to fight in this battle if you just hold your peace and let the Lord Y'all stop, we It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. It's our opportunity. It's our opportunity to prosper. It's our opportunity to prosper. You ought to make some noise because it's your opportunity to prosper. It's our opportunity for us to give God what's due to Him. Do I have anybody in here that are recipients? of knowing that the Lord will make a way out of no way. When you do right by him, he'll open up the windows of heaven. He'll pour you out a blessing. But that's not the reason why I give it. It's an act of my service. It's a part of worship. It's a part of my life. That's what I'm supposed to do. But when you are faithful to God, I guarantee you, he'll be faithful to you. Saints of God, I know what it is for you to lose income and still don't miss a dime. I stand here as a recipient of not missing that one payment. I don't have to call and ask nobody to do anything. When it was time, it was there. I didn't have to rob Peter to pay Paul. But God just sends favor and send you what you need because he remembered your labor of love. So saints of God, let's give what's given unto us. Let's stand to our feet and let's be under direction. Don't do that. Don't do that because there is something in the thank you. I said there's something in the thank you. See, you got to tell God thank you even when you don't have it. Because your key word is yet. I don't have it yet, but I thank him for it. We are the directions of our kingdom attendants and the praise team is going to lead us further. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for our seed. Thank you for those that are sowing, those that are tithing. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, by the unction of your power, that you will bless them like never before. Father, I pray for those that have the desire to give but did not give today. Father, I pray that you will blow their, grow their minds like never before. Father, that you will give them what they need and desire. I thank you now, and it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. We under the direction of our kingdom attendance. I gotta pray. I've gotta pray for my lips that I can't see to resist. It's a praise. It's a praise that that A praise. He gets a praise that is tailor made from me. I got a praise. I got a praise on my lips yes, Lord. that I can't seem to resist. It's a praise, it's a praise that resides. Gets 
shall praise. Everybody sing this with us. You know it. Say, Oh Lord, say.
so many things about a song that make it either authentic or it just could be. But one of the most important things about a song is its lyrical content. Ah. Yes. And what makes it more even important is the theological context. The, the song said, for your goodness, your mercy we offer yes. I don't just praise you because somebody tells me to do it I'm not praising you because somebody is saying lift your hands and having Simon says <laughs> you remember Simon says Simon says touch your hands and all that kind of stuff but the song says for your goodness and your mercy make it personal I offer you nobody has to tell me to do it nobody has to ask me to do it nobody has to reintroduce God to me every week but when I recognize his goodness and his mercy toward me I offer you. So without me pushing you, without the music pushing you, if that's really how you understand the lyrics, let's do it. For your goodness. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. When I was bad, you were still good. When things were bad, you were still good. Hallelujah. And then your mercy. Woo. Now, let's put mercy in context so we can really praise him. Mercy is not the absence of judgment. Mercy, turn to your neighbor and say, mercy is for the guilty. Okay. Okay. Y'all got that church face on. Y'all so deep. You turn it. To, turn to the right neighbor. Say, neighbor, mercy is for the guilty. Nobody asks for mercy. That's not guilty. Mercy is what you ask for from the judge after the sentence has been passed and you've been found guilty. Yes, sir. Now, I need all the guilty people in here. If you've been guilty of anything that offended God's grace, praise him for his mercy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, and his mercy endureth for Ooh. Hallelujah. All right. Y'all just 
Y'all just dance off the stage. For your goodness and your mercy. Everybody say, yeah, for your Y'all a stiff church. It ain't got nothing to do with your age. It ain't got nothing to do with your, your legs and your arms and your feet. Just move right where you are a little bit. Everybody just do something. Praise him with your body. They just said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Come on, command your body to praise him. I'm limited, but I'm going to give him what I got. Wait a minute. I need to hand, see the hands of everybody that's been to one dance in your life. <laughs> now, if you ain't been if you ain't been to no dance, then I understand you can't relate. But how many of y'all been to at least one? How many of y'all? Okay. <laughs> I'm the Stokes here. <laughs> I mean, you've been at least one. All right, even if you snuck to it, you went, right? It was called a dance for a reason. Yes, sir. And sometimes dancing in the house of the Lord in movement gets a bad rap. But when I was in Israel last year, I noticed something. I noticed something. Yes, sir. I noticed that every praise that Jewish people would give God, regardless of where they were. If they were in the marketplace, if they were walking down the street, if they were in the temple, it was accompanied with movement. At the Wailing Wall, you would see the priests and the men, whoever were at the wall, they would be what is called davening. They'd be rocking back and forth. There is a Hebrew word for that called Barak, means to rock back and forth. Tehila means to sing. Tagwa means to dance. We have polluted the things of God and made it evil to do these things because the world took it. But I need you to tell your neighbor, dance was in the church first. When David was coming back to Jerusalem with the ark, yes. the Bible says he leaped and he twirled and he danced. He moved. The reason why we know he was a demonstrative praiser because we could see it. Tell your neighbor, I'm, a lot, I'm about to let you see how grateful I am. My sound is gonna let you know that I, I'm thankful for mercy. My movement is gonna let God know that I'm grateful for, because I have the activity of my limbs. Everybody in here, do something right now to God. Do something, right? Whatever it is, but do something. Come on, everybody. Don't y'all sing it, y'all just play it. Y'all don't sing it. Everybody lift your voices and say something. Shout unto God. No singing. Just shout unto God. Shout unto God. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Woo!
but he has given us. His mighty hand has gotten us the victory. That's what they did in the temple. That's temple worship. I said that's temple worship. Hallelujah. Right where you are, you ought to be moving in temple worship. When y'all see something being birthed, you ought to catch, jump right in on it. You should know as the chief worship leader and the chief Levite in this house, I ain't going to let nothing happen that ain't biblical. That was biblical because that's what David did. So all of y'all that don't think that it's important and, and you ain't got to do it, then you ain't a Davidic praiser. Because David with a crown on his head. Yes. I said David with a crown on his head. Yes, sir. David as the king got out in front of everybody. And if I was feeling a little stronger, I would have led that, right? Yes, I would have. Hallelujah. Let's just give me a few more days, and I'm going to be leading that same race. Because David told, and, and listen, 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 let me tell y'all this, and I'm going to get to the preaching. Listen to this. The people that, the woman, the wife, I mean, Saul's daughter. Yes. That despised David for moving like that. That's right. She's sitting up in her window. Oh, God. She sat up in her window and was poking fun and was said, you know, my daddy never carried on like that. You don't, kings don't carry on like that. All you bougie, well, you all you bougie believers, we don't act like that. David said, let me help you with this. It was before the Lord. Your, your daddy tried to kill me 22 times. And 22 times I escaped the hand of your daddy. If you think I'm praising him now, the Bible says, he says, I'm going to be more vile than this, which means disgusting. If you are disgusted now, I need you to tell your, your neighbor, say, neighbor, if the devil is disgusted with me now, He ain't gonna be handled the next, he ain't gonna be able to handle the next praise I give God. You wait till I get me some rest. You wait till I get me some rest. You think this praise is something. You think this praise gets on your nerves. You just wait till God open that door. You just wait till God make that way. You just wait. Woo! Everybody praise him. Everybody praise him. Everybody praise him. What am I praising him for? For his goodness and his mercy. The music just happens to be playing, but the reality is I'm praising him for his goodness and his mercy. And the band played on. Yay! We got to move on. Hallelujah. For your goodness and your mercy, we offer you praise today. You don't have to take it from us. You don't have to coerce us. We offer it to you. We want to give you praise for all that you have done. And it's not just what you've done, but who you are. If you don't do another thing for us, Lord, we want to... We stop by the church to tell you thank you for who you are. And on top of that, in everything, you told us to give thanks. So in all of it, while I can't thank you for it, I can thank you in it. 
whatever my storm is, whatever my situation is, I'm going to thank you in it. I want the record to reflect that while I was hurt, I praised you. While I was broke, I gave you glory. Mm -hmm. While I was in between situations, I, wanted, I want the record to state that I lifted my hands and I opened my mouth. While things weren't where I wanted them to be, while my life was unsettled, I praised you in it. And I thank you for bringing me out of it. And if that's your testimony, now praise him like you love him today. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. His compassion fell not the new every morning. And great is the Lord's faithfulness. He's faithful and I am grateful. And uh, we're grateful for all of you who are here today to experience God in a most unique way. What I love about the presence of the Lord is that he cannot be, he cannot be predicted. God's presence cannot be predicted. He'll do what he wants to do because he delights in the praises of his people and he knows what kind of praise he wants. Uh, while God is not human, so I dare not suggest that he has moods, but what I will suggest is that he knows what he wants. Hallelujah. Amen. And he puts it in us to give him what he wants. Hallelujah. And I'm praising God today for all that he has done. Uh, I want to thank the Lord for our men's fellowship on yesterday. We had a good time. And, uh, I don't know who won. If Desmond won, it was only because I could not bowl. That's right. That's right, Bishop. <laughs> but I want to thank the Lord, and men, we are getting ready to uh, embark upon our men's ministry in a tangent more in a more effective way. So I want to encourage all the men, all the men. We will have another fellowship really soon. I'm gonna gather all the men. What would happen if the strength of if if the strength of this church would shift to the men? is my desire that the men's fellowship move in the direction where we're not just here to clean up or to fix or to paint, but we'll be strengthened through the fellowship and the building of relationships first. Can you say amen? Don't obligate me. Don't ask me to do work when you don't speak to me. Y'all are quiet. Let's build. The Bible is a book of relationships. And so yeah, it's, it's important that we build relationships. And not only that, but our women's ministry. Uh, I want to say this. Uh, uh, our Lady Andrina and her team do an amazing job, have, have started doing an amazing, amazing job at creating fellowship spaces for the women. And they've had great times together. It would be wonderful if all the women would understand that and embrace that and come together. There, are, there is strength in our numbers. Amen. So let's do that as we seek to build a strong church, not just a Sunday morning church. Uh, God didn't give us all of this to be Sunday morning only. God uh, and church and, the, and the, the ministry of fellowship does not take place in the two hours or the space of time, two to three hours on Sunday morning but it is certainly about, uh, the Bible says it like this in the book of Acts chapter number two, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in the breaking of bread and going from house to house, and in fellowship. Fellowship is fell all the fellows in the same ship. Amen. All of you that want your little boats by yourself, uh, the Lord bless you. But kingdom life is a fellowship. And if we all get on the same ship, we go somewhere. Can you say amen? Um, I want to pray. We certainly want to pray. We're, we're thanking God that Sister Anthena Johnson is home from the hospital. And uh, we're praying. We're praying for her. We are praying for Sister Ophelia Darby. I saw a daughter somewhere. 
Yes, we we gave our heads, Arjo. But we are praying today in earnest that God, and before we before we will have concluded the service, we're going to take a moment and uh, bow our hearts in prayer because I believe that God is able to do anything. There's only one thing that God cannot do, and he cannot lie. Anything else, he can do it, and I believe that God can turn it around. She was admitted to the hospital a few moments ago, I guess, now, and um, I'm, I'm trusting God. Amen. And uh, we certainly want to lift up the United House of Prayer for All People, uh, that great organization in the passing of their senior bishop, their chief bishop, Bishop C.M. Bailey, who went on to be with the Lord. And, and uh, we are praying for that church. Can you say amen? Anytime a church loses its leader, it loses something. Amen. We want to pray that God sustains it. Uh, I want to call your attention to Joshua chapter number four today. My God. Chapter number four. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's the wrong. That's the wrong thing. That's the wrong. These devices. Numbers chapter number 14. Verse 20. Millionaire Mindset will start on September the 11th, and um, Minister Juan talked about it, but all of you, us who are interested in growing our minds and expanding our understanding and knowledge and, and our opportunities, I want you to sign up. Sister Tamika Leary, she's probably across working right now, but she will be in the vestibule and, uh, for registration, and registration begins today. For all of you that will sign up and all of the information will be there and even online, there's opportunities for you to be a part of this. I will be sharing, Elder Terrence Hunter will be sharing, and uh, others from across the country, those who are proficient and professional in the area of wealth building, there is some tremendous information that will be uh, 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 shared with you and and it will be a class. It's a master class, Millionaire Mindset. It's a master class. And I'm telling you, uh, the investment of time and resources is going to pay off in ways that only your history will be, I mean, your future will be able to tell. But I'm telling you right now, every one of you that can do this, it will be worth the investment. If you can take that money and invest in a, in a dinner, <laughs> a night out on a town or, or weave, nails and feet and all that other stuff, then certainly it'd be good for you to invest in yourself. For eight weeks on a Monday night, eight weeks, it's going to be tremendous. You're going to get all kind of amazing material. Listen, uh, credit specialists, you uh, that have credit issues, because how I many you know we live in a system of credit? Amen. We live under it, and it doesn't matter how much money you have if your credit is shot. That's right. Did y'all know that? Yes. Uh, you can have money and it won't matter. You can have physical cash and it, cash and it won't matter if your beacon score is, is low. Amen. So sometimes we want God to bless us and we come to the altar for things that we need to go to the table and to the desk and get ourselves together about. Amen. It's not the will of the Lord for you to be walking around with 450 as a credit score. think y'all say amen, but it's okay. God wants you to prosper. And I'm going to show you in the scriptures how many times the Bible talks about money. It talks about money more than it talks about salvation. It talks about money more than it talks about hell. Ha, my God. The Bible talks about money more than it talks about hell. That's right. Mm -hmm. But we have been under this impression and we sing songs that only talk about by and by when the morning comes. And we got to live in this earth. All right, so that's enough of that. Numbers chapter number 14, verse 20. It's where my attention has been arrested today. The Lord replied, I have forgiven them as you asked. 
Nevertheless, as surely as I live and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one of those who saw my glory and signs I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, but who disobeyed me and tested me ten times, not one of them will ever see the land I promised on oath to their ancestors. No one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it. Be but because my servant Caleb had a, has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. Since the Amalekites and the Canaanites are living in the valleys, turn back tomorrow and set out toward the desert along the route to the Red Sea. My attention has been arrested particularly in this text by verse 24. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit, and he follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land and he, he went to and his descendants will inherit it. So far, the scripture, he's a mighty God. I want to talk for the next little while from the subject, a different spirit. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Somebody shout a different spirit. I think that one of the most important uh, characteristics or traits that you will, will ever, ever embrace and should embrace is being an individual. You must have, and I'm not talking about and all of us are born individual, and I'm not talking about hyper-individualism or individualistic attitudes or dispositions. I'm talking about the ability to critically think on your own, having a mind of your own. It's important for you and I to be able to independently think about the decisions that we make not always being influenced by someone else's thoughts. If you live through the opinions and by the decisions or the ideologies of somebody else for your life, you will always wind up unhappy, depressed, and discouraged. Because when life does not pan out the way you want it to, your frustration is, I didn't even take the time to think about what I wanted. It was always somebody else's idea. People like that find themselves mad often. People like that find themselves extremely insecure because you're never sure about what it is that you think. But an independent thinker takes the risk of even being wrong, even making bad choices, even making huge blunders, at the end of the day, you want to be able to say, it was my choice. Hmm. Independent thinking is critical for success. You cannot be successful in life when all your ideas come from somebody else. Now, does other people influence you? Absolutely. Do others teach us? You must be teachable because you don't know 
everything. I know you think you do. But the reality is none of us know everything. We all must maintain the position of being teachable. Smart people always submit to teaching. Because the smarter you are, the, the more expanded, I should say, your mind becomes, the more you realize there is more to learn. Hmm. It is interesting to watch people who have some sense of arrival. They've already there. They know it. Have you ever talked to, just keep looking straight, but have you ever talked to anybody who, who just knows everything? They just, just they got an opinion, a thought. They, they, they're just an expert in everything. I learned a long time ago that um, it is really liberating not to know everything. It's freeing because you don't have to worry about living under the pressure of being somebody you're not. You ask me a question I don't know, I'm just going to tell you I don't know. And I'm, I feel good about the fact, I don't know, but if you give me some time, I'll figure it out. I, I'll look it up. I'll go ask somebody. I'll read. Come on. Because I want to know as an individual so that I don't have to always depend on somebody else's ideas and never my own. <sighs> Let me give you some bi biblical context so that this will make sense. Because the 12 spies who Moses sent out, a man from each tribe, to spy out the land of Canaan, the Bible says that he chose 12 men to go out and spy out the land of Canaan. And 10 of those men came back. Well, 12 of them saw the same thing. 10 of them came back with a very uh, similar report. And most of the time in our societal norm or our mo cultural moray, we live under this notion that the majority rules. And so the majority said that there are giants in the land and um, we are not able to take this land. Uh, the majority said, the majority, all 12 of them saw these grapes that were so big that it took two men to carry a cluster. Uh, I don't know if I want to eat those grapes. They were extremely big grapes. It was so big that two men had to carry cluster of grapes. They were so big and they were giants. The, the sons of Anakim were in the land. Uh, uh, they, were, they were giants in the land. And, and, um, and the, all 12 of them saw that, but 10 of them said, we can't get this. We, we can't possess this land. And the 10 put fear in the thousands because the thousands, this is what's detrimental about not being an independent thinker. Ten men influence the behavior of thousands. Because when ten men came back and said, this is the deal and this is the situation, the Bible says that the men's heart fell. The, the majority of the nation's hearts mounted because of the majority opinion. But then there were two fellows who saw the same thing as the rest of them saw. And in one in particular said, y'all be quiet. I don't care what you saw. I don't care what you say. I'm independent enough in my thinking that I made my own, I drew my own conclusions. And my own conclusion is that we are well able. Y'all missed, y'all, y'all don't know when to shout. One guy stood up and said, the rest of y'all be quiet. I saw the grapes. Um, I saw um, the giants. And the rest of y'all say that we were 
uh, they were giants in the land and we were as grasshoppers. They saw themselves and they start, they start pu pu pushing that ideology on the rest of the people that they were grasshoppers in the sight of the giants. But one guy who was independent enough, I feel, it, I feel him coming already. One guy who was independent enough in his thinking said, yes, there are giants, and yes, the land is great, and yes, there are huge clusters of grapes everywhere, but let me just remind you of something. Grasshoppers don't eat grapes. I wish I could talk to the right people. Y'all, that went over your head too. Uh, so I can't be a grasshopper because grasshoppers don't eat grapes. That's not what they eat. And so y'all can be grasshoppers, but I, I'd rather just be who I am because these grapes look mighty good. And I'm going to enjoy them. It was the Hebrew boys who the Bible says of them that it was found in them an excellent spirit. It was a different attitude toward their situation because they were all in bondage for 70 years. The children of Israel are now in bondage and captivity. They were taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar and the Bible says they were in bondage but even in their captivity they maintained a different or another an excellent spirit so that they were preferred over the rest of the men in uh, the captive captivity and these hebrew boys went from being just mere slaves in babylon to being princes or leaders over provinces in a foreign country how in the world do you become a provincial leader in a land that is your captivity <laughs> over the ones who are native in the land. There is something that must be different about you. The text says that they refuse to eat the king's meat. And they said, give us 10 days and we will look different than you. The rest of them ate of the king's delicacies and they had all kind of gastro intestinal problems all of them so they had bloating you know they had swelling of the ankles and the joints they were messed up because they were eating the wrong food but because of these men said we're going to do what we know is right and we refuse to eat the king's meat the bible says they look better at the end of the 10 days than they did uh, even before it was Daniel, it was Daniel, Daniel, who becomes uh, uh, one of the greatest leaders in Babylon after being a captive. He's a captive in Babylon, but he also uh, becomes one of the most influential leaders in Babylon because God had given him a sense of independence so that when the decree was made that when you hear uh, or rather not when you hear but when uh, time for prayer anyone caught praying to any god uh, others other than uh, the king would be thrown into a lion's den the bible says that daniel lifted up his window opened up his window and turned to the east and prayed loud enough for everybody in the city to hear him praying. He said, y'all can mumble if you want to. Y'all can, can whisper a prayer. Y'all can whisper a prayer. Y'all <laughs> can whisper. You ain't got to holler at me. You can just whisper. You know, you, know, you can just whisper, you know. Uh, that went over y'all's head. It's all right. Uh, you can just whisper a prayer. But he said, no, 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 no. I want the devil and his mother-in-law to hear that I refuse to change who I am. Uh, because I'm cut from something different. 
Y'all don't have to make any noise. You can conform to the culture. You can, I mean, I'm, yeah, let me get to that. You can conform to the culture all you want, but I know who my Lord is. I know who is my, and if I prayed in Jerusalem, I can pray in Babylon. I am concerned about this generation of church because we want to do everything but identify ourselves as uh, believers. Uh, I know this ain't going to make y'all shout right through here, but uh, you got to hear me. I I'm concerned about this generation because we have now adopted the ways of the heathen. The church wants to model the world, and we take all of our cues from the world. The world tells us how to dress. I'm not going to bother you, but the world tells you what is appropriate to wear and what's not appropriate. It's the world that tells you what's fashionable. It's the world. We, we listen to things. And um, I don't harp on this uh, too much, but I think I need to bring this up a little bit. There is ought to be rather a distinctiveness about our uh, look. Y'all really going to be that quiet? All right, I know, how to, I know how to preach through the blessed quietness. Holy, it ain't even holy quietness either. It's just y'all just don't want to say nothing. But we, we, we have a, allowed the world to tell us what's fashionable, and we want to come in here, and instead of looking holy and modest, we want to look sexy. And the church is now filled with people who want to be sexy. We want to be sexy on the stage. We don't want to be anointed. We want to be sexy. We find the tightest things we can wear to show how God made us. Sexiness ain't got nothing to, no place in the house of God. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh-huh. Y'all don't, uh, now I'm not talking about you looking frumpy and because that ain't holy either. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm not talking about you looking frumpy and, and, and calling that holy. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about you not taking care of yourself and calling that holy. That's not what I mean. But there ought to be a sophistication. There ought to be a distinction. Y'all quiet. You, you can't wear everything the world wears and think that you're going to garner in a, um, a respect. You can't do everything. You can't listen to everything. I know you've grown. You can turn on any channel you want to. But please know that music has a spirit. Mm. Please know that when you take that stuff in, you are dealing with stuff that you can't even handle. Mm. Uh, I, I, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I mind well. Um, I was concerned. I, was con I am concerned in this hour how much what we call entertainment, believers call entertainment stuff that is getting in your spirit and it's controlling your behavior. Mm -hmm. You're being drawn to the high. You didn't even under, you don't even know that there are satanic rituals that are being uh, done and you don't even, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. You don't believe me? Check, I, you can fact check me. Astro World, look it up and you'll discover that there are concerts that our young people are going to and when they leave the concerts, they are losing their minds. When they leave the concerts, they're losing their sense of um, uh, cognitive understanding. They are concerts and not even the singing is going on but the atmosphere is being created. Okay, you don't think so? Uh, the Bible says it like this. When, when Saul had an evil spirit, the Bible says they call for David to play. And when David played, it soothed the evil spirit that was in Saul. Music has a spiritual power. Uh, and if the music doesn't glorify God, you open yourself up to whatever that music is trying to influence you to do. You wondering why you are horny all the time? It could be what you are listening to. Mm. 
why y'all ain't hollering. You wonder why, we wonder why our teenagers are mean and mad and nasty and they celebrate murder and they celebrate violence. Hallelujah. It's the, there's a reason for it. It's because they are listening to stuff that's telling them that it's no, they have no regard for life. And so they're picking up a gun and shooting you as fast as looking at you. And, and at the same, and at all the time, the background is kill a nigga, kill a nigga. And you wonder why we got angry boys in high school. You wonder, oh, y'all ain't gonna like what I got to say. It's because there's a spirit behind all of this. Spirit. Spirit. You're depressed all the time, but you're listening to artists that sing about their depression. Come out from among them. Y'all quiet. We playing too much. We, 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 we bringing spirits in the house of God. But forget coming to the house of God. You got spirits in your house. Here you are praying, and still some spirits are comfortable at your address. It could be because they are coexisting. We're so busy wanting to be accepted by the world. We're so busy being accepted. We want to be down. We want to be cool. We want to be noticed. I'm sorry, gospel artists, but you'll never make as much money as secular artists, but you got to be okay with that because your motive ain't the same. I sing because I'm happy. <laughs> oh, God, the God of this world, he seduces those individuals with treasures and riches. Okay, you need some Bible. Y'all looking at me funny. That's the same thing the devil told Jesus. Worship me. Hey, hey, hey. Uh -huh. Worship me. Worship me. What's that boy's name? Worship me. He's going to come to me in a minute. Worship me. Uh, what is his name? What's it? Uh, worship me, Jay-Z, and I'll make you, yes, I will. I'll make you so influential to you now think you God. You got to change your name, yes, sir, and call yourself by something you are not. And the last person that did that, the Bible says he got kicked out of heaven. Y'all right. 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 quiet. I'll give you billions of dollars. I'll make you so famous until the presidents will come and want to be in your company. The presidents will come to you. Worship me. And I'll let you have dinner with Trump, Kanye. Worship me. You'll have more money than you ever seen in your life. Yes. Sell your soul. And I told the intercessory team this morning, we got to be careful about this because sometimes people are sweet and nice and wonderful in their personality, but they are demonically influenced and don't even know it. Oh, I'm going to I'm getting ready to teach about spiritual warfare. I'm getting ready to teach about demon. I think we're all old enough and maybe mature enough. And so maybe all of y'all may not be able to come to this teaching. But for you that can handle it, maybe, hallelujah. Because I could spend all morning sometimes casting out demons. Because demons are fine in company until they get challenged. Demons can sit on the pew and be fine until you start calling them out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. And if my back was in a better position, thank you, Jesus. When I get a little stronger in my body, I'm going to de deal with it because demons don't like this kind of stuff. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Okay, you need some Bible. I'm way off script, but you need some Bible for that. The Bible says, amen, that the same man who has 6,000 demons in him, when he saw Jesus, he ran and fell and worshiped him. How does somebody with 6,000 demons worship God? Because in you, there is something in you that knows who God is. But the devil himself wants to make sure that you are so perverted, you are so distracted, you are so messed up in your head until your behavior does not reflect God. It reflects his influence on your life. You can shout crisscross your legs and still 
have demons functioning. That's why you can shout in service. And as soon as service is over, turn into the damn devil. You can do it. Because demons ain't scared of no shouting. They ain't scared of no singing. They ain't scared of no dancing. What they cannot stand is the power of God. I'm just trying to help you. Just trying to help you. You should understand. We're not a holiness church because there's a label, there's a sign. That, ain't, that don't make you holy. That's why you can sit up in God's house and shout and sing and clap your hands and get right out of here and go to gossiping and slandering. Y'all ain't, and, and running folk down as soon as the benediction is over as if you ain't heard nothing. So there is, there's got to be a difference. That don't mean that we're perfect. But I think we ought to be coming because we're trying to get there. Tell your neighbor, if this is the truth for you, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I bring my issues with me to church so I don't have to take them home. Okay, okay that went over some of y'all. y'all. I come here to lift my hands and to worship God and get a, a word from the Lord so that I don't have to take this foolishness home. I can't afford to have another week like I had last week. I don't hear nobody talk. I can't have another year like I had. I need something that's going to make the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I need something that's going to give me more than goosebumps. I need the devil that's trying to ride me to be destroyed so I can live a happy and a joyful life. The devil is a liar. Church got to be more than you than you showing off yourself. There's a difference between clean. I know y'all don't want to hear this. And unclean. There's a difference between holiness and unholiness. We're so busy, Zeb, wanting to be like everybody else. We don't want nobody to think we are so worried about the opinions of people who are unregenerated. We won't talk too much about our salvation on our job because we're afraid of how they're going to treat us. But I'm going to ask you something. What's more important to you, to be respected or to be liked? Okay, okay. okay let me try it this way. Peter we know. Jesus we know. Paul we know. Who are you? You'd rather put things on Facebook and social media for somebody to heart you, to like you, than to cry loud and say, righteousness exalts a nation. Sin as a reproach. When's the last time you told somebody, don't come to my desk with this foolishness? You ought to live so on your job that folks say, you know what? Don't come by him. Don't bring him that. Y'all ain't saying, don't, uh-uh. Don't come. Don't come with no foolishness because he ain't the one for it. Mm -hmm. You ought to be the one in your department that when something's going on, they say, you better get her to pray. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying it. You ought, to get, you, ought to, you, you ought to be the one that people can come and confide in you because they know you ain't like the rest of the people in your department. But when you who say you are kingdom, hallelujah, and you represent a kingdom that is not of this world and your behavior is the same as everybody else, you, yeah, God, you can't take your liberties as an occasion for sin. You can't do everything in front of everybody and think, yes, sir. You can't say everything you want to say. There's a whole lot of stuff I want to laugh at. There's a whole lot of things I want to comment on. But because I know who I am, y'all can take that any way you want to. I'm not being, I'm not being conceited. I'm not being arrogant. But I know 
know, more importantly, I know whose I am, and I know who I represent. I can't say what I want to say. Sometimes, even if it is funny, I got to put my hands on my head and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, cast the laughter out of me. Because why is this funny to me when somebody, oh. Everything can be funny. Know why the church can't grow? Because we're not the witness. Jesus told the disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, hey, yes, sir, you shall receive power to be my witness. Maybe we all need to go back to the altar and get the Holy Ghost. I know. See, I'm on my higher. I'm on my Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we need to be refilled with the Holy Ghost so that our very countenance gives off. I belong to God. I belong. So the text. So the text, the text says that Caleb, I'm going to give you this, 17 minutes, I'll be done. Caleb was from the tribe of Judah. He was one of the spies and he was independent in his thinking. And let me tell you this, when you are an independent thinker, thinker you will always be perceived as antagonistic, rebellious, unfriendly, opposing, arrogant, such and much, you will always be perceived in a negative connotation, Desmond, when you choose to think on your own. But let me tell you something before I get to the spiritual side. Nobody who's ever become successful in life, Nesbitt, follow the pack. You must blaze your own trail without the fear of what people say and without the need for validation. When you dance, to the beat that the Lord creates for your life, you cannot always stop to worry about who's applauding you. Oh, God. Abraham, get out of your country. Leave your familiar place and go to a place that I will show you. You can't have it both ways. Being great, in many cases, means being misunderstood. <laughs> being great <laughs> means sometimes being <sighs> not included. If I was preaching real good, I'd tell you all about Rudolph. <laughs> Y'all remember Rudolph, don't you? They never let Paul Rudolph join in any reindeer game. Because Rudy had something they didn't have. He had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw him, you would say it glows. All of the other reindeer. Used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph. With your different self. Rudolph, with your strange self. 
run off with your funny self. <laughs> I need you to let your nose shine because the rest of these jokers will make me crash. But I need somebody that has a shining nose that can pierce through the fog to get me to where I need to be. You are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill that cannot be, cannot be here. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Why don't y'all say yes? When you're cut from a different cloth, be seated. I'm still teaching this. I'm going to get to the good part in a minute. When you are cut from a different cloth, hear this. I want you to hear this. When you are cut from a different cloth, you see things through different lenses. The reason why I want to take my time with this is because I want you to get this in your spirit. You'll shout Wednesday about the word you hear today. Okay, y'all missed it over here. I said, you're going to shout Wednesday over this word you get today. Okay. You see things different when you see, when, you, when you're cut differently. I don't know who this is for, but I feel in this section I'm helping somebody when I say this. Celebrate your uniqueness. Stop being intimidated by the fact that you are different than everybody else. It is really okay. Lord, I'm preaching from experience. If you judge your success or your effectiveness by somebody else's gift, you will always feel underachieved. You will always feel insignificant because there is always somebody who does it differently. But I discovered Desmond, I don't have to be any other preacher. Now, I just broke all the rules that I was taught in seminary. You do not inspire people and then go back and inform them. If any of my seminary professors would be listening now, they would give me an F. Because I am all am interweaving out the text, in the text. They would say, that's the wrong way to preach. And, then, and the fact that I went over 28 minutes, I would fail. Like y'all give me an F every week. But God made me. And I discovered something. Can't nobody process like I process. And it may not be the best, but it is the best. James Lee Rawson Jr. That there is. Because I am the only. My daddy's senior, but I ain't him. If I had, I ain't got no more, but if I had a third, he wouldn't be me. You need to clap your hands right now for yourself. Y'all, no, y'all ain't doing it. I said, you need to clap your hands for yourself. I said, you need to clap your hands for yourself because the enemy wants you to sit there and say, well, you would be if you didn't do this and if you had that and if you were like them, but the devil is a liar. I am fearfully and wonderfully made and there is nobody else on the earth 
like me. I'm so unique until I have my own DNA. Yes, sir, with my shortcomings, with your failures, with your faults, with your successes, with your smarts, with your cuteness, whatever it is, God made one of you. You sitting here being depressed because you ain't married yet. Because you judging, you judging your time and your experience based on how you see somebody else's situation. They ain't even half a woman I am. You don't even know what they living in. <laughs> y'all, you don't even know what's going on in that house. Y'all better, y'all better stop worrying about what's in people's address. You don't know the hell. Y'all ain't say nothing. Everything that glitters ain't gold. You comparing yourself to somebody. You don't know what's going on. You don't know. Yeah. You know, mascara and Maybelline and, and Mac can cover up a whole lot of stuff. And when we come out the house, we put our best foot forward, but we have no idea. I need to, you need to thank, oh, God. Uh, you, some of you ought to just be thanking God that you dodged that bullet anyway. Mm, oh, mm -hmm, never mind. He's from the tribe of Judah. Listen to this. He's from the, I need to teach this because this, this is, yeah, yeah. He's from the tribe of Judah. Caleb is the son of Jephunneh, the Kinzanite, but he's from the tribe of Judah. Hear this. He's from the tribe of Judah. Now, most of the times when we think of Judah, we think, we think praisers. But the, 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 the characteristics of Judah was not praisers. The characteristics of Judah, they symbolize brave, bravery, nobility, and strength. The text never called them praisers. The Bible says, oh God, this is going to mess, I know, I know, I know, I know, this is, this is killing a whole lot of sacred cows, but I got to give you the truth. We, we run around here talking about send you the first. Because praises go first, but the text never teaches that. The Bible never teaches that. No, 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 no. Pr Judah was to be praised. His father, when he blessed him, he spoke over his life and said, you are to have, you will have your hands around the neck of your enemy and your brothers will praise you. When Judah's mama named him. She said, now I will praise the Lord. Not him. I will. Because finally, I ain't competing with no man who don't love me. Finally. I'm not hoping that my husband be joined to me. Finally. I'm settled in the place where I can move in nobility. I'm settled in the place where I can move in confidence. I'm settled in the place and Judah becomes the symbol of strength. That's why Jesus is called the lion of the tribe of Judah. Not because he's walking around skipping and hopping and, and jumping and shouting. It's because he stands up with strength. <laughs> David comes from the tribe of Judah. Not because he played the harp. Not because he played an instrument. But more because he killed a lion, a bear, and Goliath. I need you to turn to your neighbor and say, victory is in the hand of a praiser. <laughs> Judah means, watch this, praised, the Lord be praised, the object of praise. Let me just stop here parenthetically and prophesy. You're about, not everybody, but for only you that would scream and shout and praise God on this and identify that it's you. You're about to enter a season of your life 
where people will have to take note that the hand of God is on your life. Whoa! They're about to praise God because of your life. Okay, yeah, that, that didn't go. So let me try it this way. I said they are about to give God glory because of your testimony, because of your witness, because of your life. God's going to use you to do something that's going to cause people to praise him. God is about to anoint you with another level of strength. When you open your mouth, demons are going to start running. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. I said, when you open your mouth, demons are going to start running. I got out of the car this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I got out of the car this morning, and I could barely walk. And I went to meet uh, the intercessory team, uh, the prayer workers, and I said, and matter of fact, I didn't say anything. I walked in, and the pain was so excruciating. And I felt it just, I, my body was trembling with pain. And I was diff having difficulty to get in the door. But when I got into the door, without saying a word of English, the saints start gathering around me. And they laid their hands on me. I was bent over the chair, trying to brace so I wouldn't fall. But by the time they started, praying in the Holy Ghost. I didn't hear anybody say, Lord, touch his body. I didn't hear anybody say, Lord, heal pastor. Raise him up, Jesus. We need you right now. Nobody. But all I heard was Isha Katolohoshaya. Well, why is that important? Because likewise, the spirit help of our infirmities, we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the spirit maketh intercessions. Yes, sir, and when you start interceding in the spirit, God knows how to answer what you're saying. And while they were praying, the more they intensified their language, the straight of my back got. By the time they were finished, I was standing just like I'm standing. Why is that, amen, important for you to understand? Because when you got the spirit of Judah, you don't see what everybody else sees, but you see things differently. Judah, a man says, we are well able. The other boy said we can't do it, but Caleb said, we're more than able. I'm looking for the Caleb's in the house. Are there any Caleb's in the house? Open your mouth and say, we can do this. And if you're around somebody that ain't said nothing, this will be a good time to check your tribe. I said, check your tribe. The next time you come to the house of God, make sure you're connected to the right tribe. I'm trying to change the culture of this tribe. We got to beat Judah, y'all. Not because we dance and shout in the floor, but I need some Caleb's around that say, ain't no money in the bank. Ain't no money in the bedroom. Ain't no money under the mattress, but we are well able. Yes, sir. I'm looking for Caleb. Where's my Caleb's? I need Caleb's to come to the forefront. I'm finished, y'all. I ain't got time to exegete this like I need to. But who are you hanging with? Are you hanging with people? Amen. That got the same testimony. Are you hanging with people that are negative in everything? Are you hanging with people? that are always looking at how bad it is if you are hanging with them I'm telling you today send them a letter 
send them a text and say, I'm sorry, but I need to join a different tribe. I need to hang around people that when I say God can, you say, yes, he will. When I say holly, I need you to say hallelujah. When I say God is able, I need you to shout amen. It is so. When I say by his stripes, you holler, we are healed. If you ain't around your tribe, if you in a tribe that don't do that, change your tribe. I said change your tribe. Shake your neighbor's hand and said, neighbor, sadness is not allowed any longer in our house. Depression can't stay around us. Despair will not be welcome in our space. For greater is he that is in me than he. I'm gonna hit it in a minute. That is in the world and no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. And it Every time that rises against you in judgment, God's going to condemn them. Tell your neighbor, don't worry about nothing and nobody. What shall we say to these things? If God, if God, if God, Before us, who can be against us? I got to let y'all go, lest I weary you and hold you too long. But the text says, the Lord told Joshua, all the boys that saw me work and seen what I did and still mumbled, still complained, still had an attitude, I'm cutting them all off. They are not going to where I promised you. Sometimes I'm guilty of it. Sometimes we're trying to carry people who are good for where you were. Nesbitt, but they're not good for where you're going. And you want to hold them. You want to carry them. You want to make them come. But the Lord said, get light for your flight. Lay aside every weight and the sin. I'm telling you, there's some people you're going to have to unfriend. There's some people that are in your contact list you're going to have to delete because you do not need to have access to them. They don't need to have access to you for where you're going because where you're going is greater than where you've been. You've been in trouble and they were there. You've been in trouble and they had your back. But on this next level, you don't need nobody that wants to hold you in trouble. Push on your neighbor and say, I was there, but I'm out now and I'm on my way to higher. I'm on my way to higher heights and where I'm going, the altitude, the air is thinner. There's less space. So if all you want to do is just take up space, I'm sorry, but I got to leave you at the foot of the mountain. Because Zion is calling me to a higher place in God. And if you think I'm funny acting, it's not that I'm funny acting. I just got a different spirit. That's what the Lord said about Caleb. 
He's the one that's going to make it to the promised land. Because he got a different spirit. Shake your neighbor's hand. I got to give you up now. But shake that neighbor's hand. Like they're going to shake it out the socket. And say, I'm sorry if I'm not like I used to be. But I'm not like I used to be. I'm different now. I said I'm different now. I see the world different. I see God different. My prayer life is different. My worship is different. My praise is different. My conversation is different. My, my outlook is different. You can keep talking about what can't happen. You can keep talking about what we ain't gonna do. But what I see is, if God is for me, and I know he's for me, I, 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 I can do all things. Shout yes, shout yes. Yeah. Find five people and touch them on the shoulder. Say, I got a different spirit. Don't stop till you get to five people. Tell them I got a different spirit. I'm sorry. I don't dance like you want me to dance. I'm sorry I got more to do today. I'm sorry if I don't shout like you think I ought to shout. I'm sorry if I can't shop where you shop. I'm sorry if I don't find things funny that you find funny. But I got a different spirit. I've been through some different things in this year. I've been through some different struggles. It's got me feeling different. It's got me thinking different. And if God was merciful enough to spare me through that foolishness, I am not going to blow my future over my crazy past for he that the sun sets free is free I know you say you acting funny now you acting different now but yeah I am cause you don't know like I know what the Lord A different spirit. I see a different spirit coming in this church. I feel a different spirit coming in this church. A different spirit of love. We're going to love like we never loved before. We're going to pray like we never prayed before. We're going to see the glory like we never seen it before. Somebody open your mouth. Lift your hands up and say, Lord, give us a different spirit. different spirit a different spirit I don't have to do it like you 
because my victory is not connected to your opinion. My destiny is not connected to what the masses think. I found out, all the Stokes, I found out you can have thumbs up with people and have thumbs down with God. And if you're not careful, you'll be seduced by the approval of people. Desmond, if you're not careful, you'll let people make you think it's God. I know what that feels like. And the God has to say, what did I say? Because you know what I've discovered? When it's God, when people are like this, he'll still be like that. This ain't going to apply to everybody. But Kingdom Life in a few weeks will celebrate 21 years. Watch this. Watch this. Because when people did this, God did that. I've been young, now I'm old, and I have never everything set against you won't matter when you have a different spirit and can I tell you this when you get a different spirit you don't even pay attention to what people say down a little bit. I want to say this and I'm going to pray. I need you to open your mouth and declare, I'm going home. I need you to shout to the devil hear you. I need you to shout to the demons. Listen, listen to this. I need you to shout with your voice, but I want you to praise him with your body when you say this. I want you to shout so loud to the demons that have been sitting at you in your driveway. The dream that, because hear this, historically, they let you shout and carry on because they know you're coming back home and you're going to be the same. But today, you heard something. I said, you heard something that just changed your entire future. I need you to shout to let them know I'm on my way home. But I'm coming home with a different spirit. Word me 
won't worry me. What bothered me won't bother me. What made me nervous won't make me nervous. What kept me up at night won't do it again. No, nope. mm -mm. I'm going home with a different spirit. I'm going home with a different spirit. I'm going home with a different spirit. My attitude just changed. It ain't just get adjusted. I'm going to work with a different spirit. That co-worker that bothered you got on your last nerve Friday? Buy him breakfast for tomorrow. I said buy him breakfast. Buy him breakfast. Buy him breakfast. That family member that's been challenging you, go home and hug him. I said, go home and hug him. Go home and hug him. Tell him you love him. Tell him all is forgiven. I'm not holding nothing against you, and don't you hold nothing against me. A different spirit I'm talking about. different spirit. I'm going to pray for somebody today as you all assemble in your place. I want to pray for somebody today that hears, hears me, listen to me, that will honestly say I've been way too influenced by the majority and they've been affecting the way I operate. I've been letting not just the majority, but outside forces dictate my behavior. My father-in-law once said to me something that is stuck in my head. You can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you can sure stop them from building a nest. I can't stop them from swarming but I ain't going to give them a place to land. I'm not going to let worry just build a nest on my head. Uh-uh. Storms keep on raging. And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still the hope that lies within, it reassures as I keep my eye upon the distant shore. I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place way he has prepared but if the storm don't cease and even if the wind <laughs> keep on blowing in my life woo, my soul has been like the wind is blowing my leaves are bending but I ain't gonna break cause I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water I shall not be moved I'm going to say something that the Lord had to teach me in when I say, you know how you think you know something, but you don't know it till it has, it has happened in your life. The Holy Ghost don't make you passive. Sometimes we think that the Holy Ghost makes us afraid to confront things and deal with stuff, but the Holy Ghost will stand up in you. You know what makes you passive? When you, fret, when you worry about what the person will free, do and the opinion of people. Joshua stands up. He stands up in front of everybody and says, as for me and my house, we will. Y'all can all go where you're going. 
I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about in your life. You gotta, you you do what you want to do. But as for me, in my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. And anything that opposes that, you gotta get out. Or you gotta stay, but you gotta conform. Everything in this house is gonna worship God. <laughs> And I'm going to say this to kingdom life. Everything in this house is going to obey God. Why y'all ain't yelling now? And anytime somebody corrects you, you want to be, you call it control. You can call it what you want to call it. Hallelujah. But I'm going, I'm telling you in this house as the chief shepherd, uh, not the chief shepherd, but the under shepherd in this house, we're going to obey God. I need to hit, I need to hear the sound of the church holler. I said, we're going to obey God. We're going to do what God's word says do. We ain't going to preach nothing but the gospel. We ain't going to teach nothing. I need the ministers and elders to say something. We're going to teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to preach the truth. I was, the other week, the other week, you all have heard me talk about Apostle Genial Jennings. If you're familiar with the ministry, he, you know how dogmatic and how emphatic he can be. But the other day I was listening to him. I was listening to him and the spirit of conviction hit me so hard. I almost began to weep, Ma, because he brought up something, and it was pure Bible. Wasn't that stuff that he be talking, because sometimes he talks crazy. Yeah, you talk crazy. I'm not talking about the, all the surrounding stuff. I'm talking about the Word of God. And it hit me, and I, I'm going to tell you why I felt conviction. I said, how come I haven't said this? So busy trying to assimilate and worry about what people think. But I had to respect the fact. He said, give me a book, chapter, and verse. <laughs> Read the Bible. The same Bible that we say we preach and teach from. Jesus said, if you add anything to it, or you take anything from it, going to remove you. I wish to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. All I got is Jesus for you. And if you don't want Jesus, then you don't want, you don't want him. Nothing else will really matter. Every head bow. If you are not saved today and you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, and if, let me say this, you don't have what Caleb had. You're still being influenced by the world. I want to invite you to this altar. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you personally myself. I get a chance to pray with you physically this way. I want you to get up from your seat right now. I ain't got but a couple minutes to do this. Come on right now. Come on. Come on. I don't want to ever want to assume everybody in the house is fine and everybody's saved and everybody's walking with God and everybody's filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't want to assume that. I want to give you a chance to, to acknowledge I need the Lord. I've walked away from my commitment. If that's you, come on right now. I'm, I'm a backslider. We don't use that term anymore. But I've walked away from God. I'm not where I should be in the Lord. Come on right now. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm, I want to come home. I want to come home. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. Earnestly, fervently, Jesus is calling. Calling for sinners. Come home, come home, 
come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, fervently, Jesus is called. Calling all sinners, come home. Father, I thank you right now doing what you told us to do. And we, Father, we leave here today declaring that we shall have a different spirit. Let it show up in our walk, in our talk, our behavior, our character. Every time that old man wants to creep up, remind us that we've been made new. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin any longer therein. Do it, Lord. And I thank you in Jesus' name. It is so. Clap your hands and praise him. That last call I want to make. If you've not been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of your sins, if you've not been baptized, if you have not had the experience of water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus, neither is there salvation in any other name. But I've been baptized this way. I get that. But there is Bible to substantiate the need to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's not a church denomination. It's a biblical principle. I'm all right. I've been baptized one way. I get that. But come and find out what the, there is a difference that makes the difference. Acts 2.38 is clear as Matthew 28.19. Matthew 28.19 does not contradict Acts 2.38. The Father, the name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Son is Jesus. And the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, I'm going to send a comforter in my name, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you've not had that level of, of experience, come on right now. Even if you are slated to be or you or intend to be baptized, I want you to come right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Come on. Thank you. All right. Good. Clap your hands and praise him. Everybody baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want every one of you to take a seed in your hand right now. Whew. This, this word today, God has an unusual way of talking to us. I said the Lord has an unusual way of talking to us. I want all of you that would take a $30 seed right now. I want you to get it in your hand. And I want you to begin to sow it right now in the name of the Lord. Next Sunday is our super, uh, what is it? Strategy for victory. Super 120, right? Strategy 120. And I pray that you will be diligent in that so that we won't have any challenges. We're not going to have this kind of word being released and this kind of glory be released and financially be destitute. We're not going to struggle financially and be shouting like this. I need to hear somebody. I need to hear somebody else. I said we are not going to have this kind of level of anointing and then be struggling financially. That's not God's will. I'm going to say something that may sound racist, might sound prejudiced or racially biased or whatever. It is only the black church that thinks it's okay to be saved and, and broke. Thank you. Bless you. I'm going to say it again. We are the ones that get offended the most about wealth and about having enough and more than enough. What would happen if our mind changed? What, ha what would happen right now? The Lord bless you. What would happen? What would happen? The Lord bless you. Bless you, bless you. 
Come on, there's a hundred of y'all that can do this today. It's really simple. It's really simple. I want you to stretch your faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Stretch your faith. I want you to trust God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord bless you. Lord bless you. Bless you. Come on. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Givers of livers. Now, how many of y'all would give it if you had it? All right. Lord bless you. I need to hear the sound of, of those that believe God. Amen. seed, if you're doing by realm, put it in seed. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't have 30. Oh, come on with the 30. Come on, come on. Let me prophesy while y'all sitting here. Oh, what if I, yeah, let me. The scripture says, I prophesy as I was commanded. For all of you that will praise him Amen. like it's already done. If all of, for you that would praise him like it's already done, I have a goal today of trying to reach to make sure that we are okay with our finances. And I'm believing God that somebody under the sound of my voice, not everybody, but under the sound of my voice, somebody real soon is going to write a $30,000 check. And will not feel it. Hey, my baby. And you won't feel it. Okay, not everybody. And that's okay. Ma, you going to. All right. But I need, oh, bless you. I need you that believe that you're the one that's going to write a $30,000 check and won't, and won't flinch. You won't flinch. I need you to go ahead and shout right now. The reason why I told you to shout, you won't hear me say, ask you to do stuff just to raise your emotions and all that other stuff. Folk close to me always accuse me. You got a, my wife says, you got a Bible verse for everything you say. I don't care what you say. You always got some kind of Bible verse. The Bible says when the people shouted with a great shout. The Bible says, not me. I don't need you to shout. Please understand, I don't need you to shout. I just need you to obey God. I said we're going to obey the, we're going to obey the Bible. The people shouted with a great shout. And when they shouted with a great shout, the Lord set up ambushments. And the enemy turned on himself. And there is some money that's been held up for somebody in this house. Oh, shut up. I said there's some back pay. There is some back pay. There is some back pay. Oh, shiata. Look, oh, shiata. I'm on now, shiata. Yes, Lord. LaShawn, the government owes you some money. Listen, lift your hands up. The government owes you some money. I see some. God, I'm. Because God don't talk in the rent. There's some money that's been held up. You just get ready because it's about to be released. Somebody help her praise them. I'm telling you, I'm not playing. I don't, I don't play with this. I don't, I don't play with this. Don't play with this. I saw thirty dollars. I didn't have thirty, but I got the closest thing. I got the Walmart Walmart rollback twenty nine eighty eight slash. I need everybody to get a seat in your hand and come flood this altar right now. Come on, 
Come on, right now. You that are online, get in this because there's somebody online. Thank you, Jesus. If you sow right now, if you sow right now, God's going to visit your situation. There's somebody online that's about to be, something been held up. God's about to release it in your midst. God's about to release it in your, you need to come with a praise. You need to come with a praise. Crystal, come here. Come here. Lift your hands. Take this home. Tell your mama the devil owes her some money. How? I said the devil owes her some money. And you tell her I said it's been released. How? Father, I thank you for every seed. I command every seed to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and take dominion. And I command that whatever I spoke today in this house will come to pass. I decree and declare somebody's being released that $30,000 check is being written by the hands of a believer right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're touching somebody online to sow into this ministry right now. In the name of Jesus, somebody is about to write the greatest check of their life because they received this word today. And it is so in Jesus' name. I need the people to shout with a great shout. will be held, will be, it's rescheduled and postponed to the last Sunday of this month. Amen. We'll have it at the, in the service. So we ask you to ask all faculty, staff, school members, whomever to come out that day. That will also be the day that the seasoned sisters have their hot dog sale. And I believe that's, and get on the bus, Gus. We're leaving at about 2.15. We're going to um, Laura, South Carolina. So we want everybody to pack the bus and come on and let's go. Pastor, what time did you say? It's on? You said three. Can't hear that. Two. Okay. Three and a half. Okay. Okay. All right. Bless God. <laughs> Thoughtful, thoughtful is like yours, lifts my spirits, reminding me that God is with us every day through the people in our lives. Thank you for the blessing you are and all the happiness you bring. I love you all so much. That's from Lady A. Amen. We love you too, Lady. Amen. All right, let us all stand. Amen. Again, we're leaving. We'll meet out here. Two o'clock, if you can come, and we're coming. We got one say thank you to our online um, listeners. We thank you for joining us on today. We hope you come back again on Tuesday night at seven o'clock. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for such a strong word on today, Lord God. We bless your name and we ask that you keep us in your care, Lord, as we leave this place, but never depart from your grace. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Everybody say amen.